Are you struggling to hit your driver straight? I'm about to change that fast. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the easiest way to hit your driver straight. I'm gonna help you make your driver your most favorite club in your golf bag. I've got a simple one, two, three system. Believe me, number three, it's a little scary, but it's the key to straighter drives. Imagine being able to step into your tee shot, knowing you are gonna smash that ball down the middle every time. I'm gonna show you the secret and how to improve your driver fast. So number one is your fundamentals of setup. If you look after your fundamentals of setup, then they will look after you through the rest of the swing. Number one, you want the shaft relatively straight with the head. You don't want it leaning forwards and you certainly don't want it way back. Number two, you want the ball position just inside lead heel is a really good place for it to start. Anywhere between the middle of your foot to two inches inside lead heel, is a really good place for you to work out where the best place to hit it from is. Then we want foot flare. We want your lead foot turned out nearly 20 degrees. Feel that your lead foot is turned out. Trail foot relatively straight on. Width for stance. We want a good width for stance where you have this triangular shape from your feet up to your hips. Get that good solid base. We're going to make some turns. We're going to need some stability. And then with your posture, just try and feel that you're just leaning slightly forward with your tummy, chest pointing down just over the ball. We don't want over straight backs and we certainly don't want to be too rounded. And then finally, you need to be pointing yourself in the direction you want to hit the ball. So try and get everything parallel to that ball to target line. We want you trying to set yourself up in a way that's going to allow you to hit through this ball and send that ball down that fairway. Look after these fundamentals and your golf swing absolutely will start to look after you. Now you've nailed your setup, it's time to build your backswing. Point number one, I want you to try and get your hands over your trail shoulder on the backswing. So make a turn up to the top and you want to try and get your hands over trail shoulder and you need some space between your hands and your trail shoulder what this will do two things it will promote good turn well at the same time good stretching out with your arms and hopefully some better wrist angles which we'll come on to in a second by having this good built backswing with some reach it's going to give you the room to actually make a downswing where you hit that ball down that fairway and get rid of those horrible over the tops or the ideas of dropping and flipping around. So as basic as it gets, from your hands being down over your chest, good shoulder turn and try and get your hands over trail shoulder. Easy ways, just once you get to the top, drop your hands down. Are they over this trail shoulder touching? So the other club touches my trail shoulder. If they are, we're in a great position to start trying to make a downswing. But let's not forget this bit. As you get your hands over your trail shoulder, this bit, the flat face, the bit that's going to start the ball in a direction has to be looked after. And you are going to look after this face with your wrist angles. Now what we want to do is orientate the face more up to the sky. For most golfers, lots watching this video, your club face is going to be orientated where the toe end is pointing down at the ground. I want you to feel like you get that face or the back of your lead hand or the back of your trail hand. So back of lead hand will point up to the sky. Back of trail hand would point more down to the ground. Obviously, that whatever one does, the other does the opposite. So trail shoulder back swing with reach, so hands over. But at the same time, we're trying to get that wrist turning that face more up to the sky. The more we get the face at the top of the backswing turning this way, so at the top of the backswing turning up to the sky, not many bad things happen from there for average golfers. When the face is here at the top of the backswing, so orientated more this way and then up behind them, we see a lot of bad things from there. And think about the wrist angles as a gradual movement throughout your backswing, meaning I don't want you to try and get your hands over trail shoulder, then right at the end, just put a big twist in. Feel like as you start the swing, you're constantly just gently rotating the wrist down to the ground at the start. So slightly early, more this way, just slightly. Keep it constant. Spread the movement, basically, of your wrist starting with this angle up to the top of the back swing, getting closer to this angle. See how gentle that is. Spread that movement through the whole back swing. Don't just do it at the beginning. That gets in a mess. 
Don't just try and do it at the top because what happens is people bounce back and take it out. So gradually try and flatten this wrist off as you go with that stretch. Building that backswing over trail shoulder, good wrist angles. We're ready for tip number three and this is the scary one. If you're liking the tips, remember, hit that subscribe button and the like button for me down there. So we've built our backswing. We now need to develop our downswing. And the trick with the downswing is twofold. I want you to feel as you start your downswing that you keep your back to target for longer. So many golfers from here feel like they just have to open up, which tends to chuck the club this way. So as that club starts dropping, remember you've created this space, club starts dropping, keep that back to target for almost as long as you can. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you drills to put all these points into practice. And then the secret sauce, back to target, but at the same time, feel like you're just dropping down with your body. So feel like you're pushing down into the ground with both feet and then a little bit more with lead foot. So you're gonna be more back to target, dropping, feeling like you move on to lead foot, pushing down into the ground to allow you then to get up and out of this ball to absolutely nail it down that fairway. So your one, two, three, fundamentals of setup. Get them right, they will look after you. Backswing building, over trail shoulder with stretch, good flattening off of the lead wrist, a bit more extension bending of the trail wrist, whichever lights your lemon the most. Downswing, back to target for longer and trying to push down into the ground and into lead foot to then get out. These three, three simple steps are the key for straight drives. Now, what are some of the common mistakes we see when people are trying to do this? Set up common mistakes, ball position reaches, where the ball position gets way outside a lead foot. We need to get rid of that. Also, we see very bad foot flares. So often no turnout with lead foot and often turnout with trail foot. And for lots of golfers, both feet quite straight on. They do this, I think, because it helps create straight lines. Let's get that foot flare, because this is what's gonna help us actually use this ground, use this club and get our stretches. Back swing, we see clubs under shoulder. We see clubs out and hands out in front of the shoulders. We see lead shoulder coming up and the hands going around. Remember, we're trying to get hands over this shoulder. So get those hands up, lead shoulder down to get that stretch with that bit of wrist angle. And in this backswing, I want you to try and feel like you have a little bit of pace to it. The killer move for lots of people's uh, driver swing, which makes them really struggle, is they think the driver swing should be kind of low and slow on the way back. What we find from good players is once they've set their fundamentals, they're actually quite quick up to the top of the backswing. It's quite an explosive move, helps get stretch, helps build up force, helps build up some coil in their backswing. What we see from amateurs is this low and slow kind of backswing where they get a little bit in a mess and then lots of kind of turns and sways happening. We don't want that. And then common mistakes with the downswing, it's feeling like they, people need to open up loads. That causes this action. Let's get rid of those. And also people feeling like they have to lay down while opening up. This causes all kinds of horrible shots. You do not need to just drop this club round here, keeping that back to target with some pressure. As long as you've got that reach in the ground to be able to drop your arm so your arms can come down, is gonna sort your downswing out. The fundamentals of the setup need to be drilled, meaning you should be doing them every day you can, doing them at home, in the office, at the range, on the course. Now, each one of you watching is gonna nail and maybe not nail each one of these fundamentals. So whichever one you're missing out on, make it part of your routine when you set up to the golf ball. Let's pretend you're not very good at the foot flare with lead foot. You should be practicing every day, as you're getting dressed, wherever you are at the range, turning that lead foot out and keeping that trail foot straighter on and working that into whatever routine you have to help you set up to the golf ball. So let's build this backswing. How can we get this stretch? Two ways. Uh, it's the same, but you're gonna use different arms. If you're more of a lead arm kind of a feeler of your golf swing, take your trail arm behind your backswing, good turns with your shoulders and try and get your lead arm away from your body. Feel like you're stretching it up there as far as you can. As you do that same time, try and feel the flattening of that lead wrist. This is great for creating stretch. It's also good for creating some pace because if you go kind of low and slow with this, it all gets a little bit floppy. You need that pace to get that club actually stretching out with one arm. Now, if you're a trail arm feeler, 
so you feel like you want to stretch more with this arm, do the same thing. But this time with your trail arm, you're going to have to feel like you extend this wrist, so bend the trail wrist back. Also feel like you don't overbend trail arm and also feel like you get your trail shoulder going this way. So it doesn't matter which arm you use to get that stretch, lead or trail. Practice with both. I'm someone who used to always be lead. I'm thinking more trail now, and it has really helped to try and think of something else. So play a bit with both of those. And the scary one, the back to target for longer while pushing in the ground. Really good way of practicing this is just get the trail foot back. Or even pick it up slightly. You can keep it on the ground if you haven't got great balance. So from the top of the backswing here, you can feel like you just sink down into that lead foot, feel like your arms pull down, kind of half a foot to a foot, and then bang, turn through. Great way of getting the feeling of that back staying for longer to that target. And then you can work that in to the two foot swing. And I would blend it. See how I'm doing it this way? And then back to normal, just to try and blend those two feelings because obviously this is quite an abstract way to stand, but it is fantastic for getting rid of these kind of down swings. One, two, three. Fastest way to hit your driver straight. If you want to hit your irons better, use this video. It's got great info. It's a brilliant iron shot.